Hello, Centerville United Methodist Church. This is Will Montgomery on this Tuesday, August 4th, with a very important announcement regarding our upcoming outdoor Holy Communion services. They'll take place this Sunday at 8 o'clock in the morning, and then Thursday, August 13th at 7 p.m. How I wish we could say to everyone, just come and we'll break bread together. Uh, but we have guidelines that we have to live by uh, as we seek to share this means of grace. And so we're offering uh, two services the, this week, uh, beginning on Sunday. And for each service, we'll have 50 people plus those who are volunteering. And so when it comes time to signing up, I invite you just to sign up for one of the events, not for both, as we want to maximize the number of people who would like to receive communion and giving them the opportunity to do so. So this is a rather lengthy announcement, but I want to give you some ideas on what to expect as you're making your uh, preparing to come to receive Holy Communion, uh, whether it's this Sunday morning or on Thursday, August 13th. So each week, uh, actually with this Facebook post and uh, on the website, we'll post two events to, in which to sign up for. We're using Sign Up Genius. And so you can go and click on the event you like to attend and sign up that way. We encourage you not just to sign up uh, five people in your family, like in my family, five people on one slot. Uh, it's actually five spaces for five people in my family, should they all want to attend. And so sign up one per person, uh, not uh, one slot for three people or four people or more. So for the Sunday's event, we encourage you to sign up by uh, Friday, August 7th. For the Thursday event of August 13th, we encourage you to sign up by August 12th. And this will help with the prep, prep, preparation needed uh, by our volunteers. The reason for the sign-up is not just for the preparation that's needed, but it's for contact tracing. Should we need to contact all who are in attendance? Uh, should there be someone who uh, comes later and says, I've tested positive for COVID? We need to let everyone who uh, was at that event aware. And so that's why the importance of registering and why that is needed. So on the day of the service, whether it's on a Sunday morning at eight o'clock or on a Thursday evening at seven, as you drive onto the church property, you'll be greeted by one of our volunteers and they'll simply ask, have you registered for the event? And if so, you're invited to go into the church parking lot and there'll be someone there to assist you in parking. If you have not registered and we don't have any spaces available, you will simply be asked to register for the next available time and come back to the church for another event. If we still have some space available and you have not registered, that parking attendant will know that, and then that person can then uh, guide you further to the parking lot. And when you get to the registration table, tell the volunteer that you have not registered in advance, and you can register at that time. So even in the parking lot, we'll be practicing safe distancing. And so we're not parking right one car next to the other. There'll be a, a, a car or a vehicle, and then there'll be an open space, and then there's another vehicle. So even in the parking lot, we're practicing safe distancing. So we're not going to be congregating uh, between cars uh, with one family unit with another family unit. And so that's why we're going to have two volunteers in the parking lot helping people find their way through the parking lot. Now, once you are, are parked and you're ready to come out of the car, we invite you before you come out uh, to go ahead and put on your face mask. Uh, every person in your household uh, needs to be wearing a face mask on the church property. And so go ahead and put that on. Uh, we encourage you to bring your chairs, uh, bring folding chairs. This is a bring your own chair event. Uh, and so if you uh, don't have a, a folding chair to bring with you, uh, these services are not long, so you can feel free to stand for the duration of the service. Uh, but again, bring a folding chair, bring with you your mask. You'll see signs directing you to the registration table. Uh, and even in the parking lot and along the sidewalk, we'll be practicing six feet of separation. So while you're waiting in line, should there be a line for uh, entering, uh, you'll see posters. Uh, there'll be small posters, but posters nonetheless with four questions. And so you'll need to look through them, answer them truthfully. Uh, and if you have symptoms or you're awaiting a test for COVID uh, or tested positive for COVID, you're not to participate. Uh, but you'll read through that and you acknowledge with our volunteer that you are in agreement with all that's stated here in answering these four questions. And so once receiving uh, your registration, you'll also be assigned a number and a color. 
Uh, and that number of color will correspond with one of these discs. And these uh, discs will be all throughout the seating area. And so the volunteer usher will then lead you, let's say you're green, you're orange uh, one, and that person will then take you to where the number one orange color disc is. And you just set up your, your chair right over that number. Uh, they'll be spread out throughout. So they're, again, we're socially distancing. And we encourage you to set up your chair facing the administrative wing of the church. You'll see the communion table set up already. And so you'll just know that that's the front. That's everyone will be facing in that direction. So while we're waiting for people to come on site, it doesn't mean that we have to wait in silence. I mean, social distancing does not mean silence. And so as you are there, uh, we encourage you to share a conversation, to meet new friends, to, to get reacquainted with older old friends uh, during that time. Uh, and so we encourage you to do that. Uh, even though we're not able to hug one another or extend a, the hand of uh, friendship, uh, we still want people to be able to enjoy the time uh, connecting with one another. Now, during the service, uh, we will have prayer, uh, we will have scripture, we'll have meditation, and certainly the great thanksgiving and the sacrament of Holy Communion. We will not be hand handing out uh, bulletins. There'll be no exchange of paper there. Uh, the communion elements will be on the table and also individual cups uh, will be out there. So we'll have probably uh, 50 of these and plus the ones for the volunteers uh, on the table. And an usher, uh, when we're ready, uh, will invite all those in particip all participants to come up and receive uh, one of these prepackaged communion cups with the wafer on top. And so you'll be invited up to receive that. You don't consume it near the front. Uh, but you go back to your chair, or if you're standing, you go back to uh, the dot. And uh, we will then be asked to remove our, our mask. And that's the only time we can remove our mask uh, to receive Holy Communion. Now, if you're uncomfortable removing your mask and you wish to wait to receive, to per consume Holy Communion, uh, when you get to the car or when you get back to home, you're certainly welcome to do that. Uh, but there will be a time when we'll ask, okay, now please remove your mask. And if you like to receive the bread and receive the cup, you can do so in that time. Now, following the service, uh, it doesn't mean that we've come, we've broken bread together, and you've got to leave. Uh, and as long as we've got some volunteers who are willing to remain and to make sure we're keeping safe, uh, the safe distancing, uh, you're encouraged to, to, to share a conversation. Now, should one of our volunteers see that you're maybe four feet apart and not six feet apart, they'll ask you to you know, kindly step back further. I uh, also want to let you know, if you're not willing to wear a mask during the service, then please do not sign up. Uh, we are required to wear the mask on church property uh, when we are engaged with a, a service with many, many people who are present. And so, again, uh, wear a mask uh, whenever we're having an in-person gathering. Uh, also, I uh, wanted to let you know that the, the service starts at 8 o'clock. And I know if we have a normal 8 o'clock service, sometimes we're arriving at 8 o'clock or maybe a little bit before. I encourage you to, to be on the campus by 745. I mean, if everyone shows up at 8 o'clock and we've got to go through this registration, answering those questions on the poster, it may take some time. Uh, and so I would encourage you, you know, to start attending, start gathering uh, here by 745 and even if it's 8.50, 7.55, that's okay too. But just, we don't want everyone showing up at 8 o'clock for an 8 o'clock service. So I look forward to this gathering of finally being able to break bread together uh, here. And so I'm excited uh, for this Sunday and then the following Thursday. And then our, whole, our healthy church team uh, will meet on August 10th and they'll evaluate at least the first Sunday morning experience so then we can make plans for the future. I uh, look forward to breaking bread with you together, and so I encourage you to sign up if you're comfortable in doing so and uh, in, in coming together for this service. Take care, and God bless.